Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Pig Health Today, and with me is Dr. Jose Angulo. He is a technical services veterinarian and also a PERS specialist at Zoetis. Thanks for joining us today, Jose. Thanks for having me, Joe. Now, traditionally, I think PERS control efforts have really been focused on the breeding herd, haven't they? Yeah, that's right. And so you've been looking at, you know, once you maybe try to clean up a breeding herd, the impact that the finisher herd can have on the breeding herd, is that right? Yeah, and, and, and this is uh, something that we have been working uh, during the last years. If you look at the research on PERS during the last years, all the research, or the most, most of the research has been focused on the soft farm. And uh, to try to identify the risk factors in soft farms, uh, to keep the PERS virus out of those soft farms, um, and that's okay. But in many systems, what we have seen is that when we spend a lot of efforts in the soft farms, we're still having outbreaks on those soft farms. And how did you come across this? Was this just producer experience, or were you doing some trials where you thought the breeding herd might continue to stay clean, but then got infected again, and then you traced it back to the, the finishing herd? How did that work? Yeah, and most of them are observations from production system and practitioners. But um, uh, the last fall, I had the opportunity to start my uh, master degree in the University of Minnesota. I'm working with Monsi. And basically, I'm working on the master program around PERS epidemiology. And we decided to go in that direction because looking at the research again and those field observations, we believe that we need to start focusing more on understanding uh, the role of the growing pigs on per spread on those regional areas. So and why does that occur, do you think? Because most of these farms today, don't they have separate site production? Yeah, and that's a very uh, interesting question and important question. That's something that we're trying to figure out with uh, the project that uh, I'm doing uh, with uh, Monsi at the University of Minnesota on my master is to identify the risk factors and evaluate also the incidence rates on growing pigs. So right now we are uh, running a project. We enrolled uh, 60 winter finish sites from different systems mm -hmm. and we're monitoring those winter finish sites every month uh, through our fluids and we're measuring when they're getting infected with PERS, but also we are surveilling those uh, to identify risk factors and try to understand what, what are those risk factors to minimize the spread of uh, PERS virus uh, from the growing pigs. And this must be particularly important to any operation that is trying to eliminate PERS or maybe even coming close to eliminate PERS. This could be the one or missing piece. Or even controlling PERS. And we just also um, run a, a retrospective analysis um, in, in when we identify um, the relationship between the growing pigs uh, prevalence and the risk of getting infected in the south farms. Uh, that was something that we presented at Lehman Conference. And these, these analysis came out because, again, we were trying to, um, to identify systems and to enroll um, in the project. And I had a conversation with many practitioners in the industry, and one of them was Paul Jeske. And in that conversation about the role of growing pigs and the spread of PERS in regional areas, he said, well, this is something that I have seen for many years in my practice. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that kind of conversation is when we, we decided to go back to one of their, uh, his uh, production system, one of uh, his clients, and run a retrospective analysis with the surveillance data that they have because in this particular system, they have uh, negative filter cell farms in a specific region, we're talking about uh, 12 miles radio uh, geographical uh, location, and then 18 growing pigs on that specific area. And they, we, we, we took data from the last four years uh, from their surveillance, and we 
just describe some of the metrics that we use in epidemiology, mm -hmm. like um, the cumulative incidence on cell farms, the incidence uh, rates, uh, infection ration, and also a regression analysis to determine if there is <coughs> an association uh, with the breaks that we're seeing in cell farms with the prevalence on growing pigs. What would be the route of transmission, though, from the grower finisher pigs back to the breeding herd? Actually, that's a common question, and that was one of the questions when we presented this analysis, because in this analysis, we, one of the outcomes was that it is a significant association between the prevalence in the growing pigs and the south farm. So as the prevalence in growing pigs increases, we have a risk of uh, the prevalence in south farms mm -hmm. increases as well. And, and one of the questions during that presentation was, what, what, what is the reason, what is the spread, how they are getting affected? But that's something that we're trying to figure out with this project at the University of Minnesota, because we need to identify the risk factors and work around those risk factors to minimize that uh, risk of uh, spreading the virus through the soft farms. So right now, what we can say with this analysis is that growing pigs do represent a risk for the soft farms. And it could be part of uh, the scenarios or the problem where we're getting frequent outbreaks in soft farms. And so one of the recommendations out of this analysis was, okay, let's first let's try to, to keep the prevalence in growing pigs as slow as we can. And in order to do that, we need to understand better what are the uh, risk factors. What, what are those factors that make the prevalence increase? Uh, well, in that was my pigs? next question. I mean, it seems like you really need to tighten up your control programs in, in the finisher pigs. How do you go about doing that? Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, there's different strategies. And of course, I mean, vaccination is one of them. But even with vaccination, um, and, 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 and this is something that we're going to learn also in this, in this project, there are different protocols, um, different strategies for vaccination. So uh, right now we need to understand also what is the best way to maximize the, um, the performance of the intervention that we're putting in, in place to not, not even, not only uh, minimize the clinical signs, and, and the economic impact, but also reduce the shedding in order to minimize the risk of other outbreaks in South Farms or in the area. Well, and I know you've looked at this pretty closely over the years. What have we learned as an industry about the proper timing of vaccination in the grower finisher herd? Well, in my experience is that we need at least four weeks before the challenge to generate the immune response. And in, in many cases, I mean, we're vaccinated earlier because we have an early exposure in the nursery. So timing is one of the most critical aspects for um, vaccination, piglet vaccination. The other one is the status of those pigs at the time of vaccination, if they're viremic or not. And this is um, related to the stability uh, status of the soft farm. So for from my standpoint and from my experience, those two are the most critical factors when we're talking about vaccination. But also, first, it's not just vaccination, and that's a very important point. Um, there's many other factors that we need to work with, like big flow management, management practices, um, all the other pra management practices in the growing pigs that many times we don't care. And that's something that we're trying to identify in that project. What else uh, we need to do? And what else beyond, can be done? Yeah, beyond vaccination yeah. Uh, to um, minimize the and, and, and be more successful on birth control and elimination programs. What about maternal antibodies, though? Because if you're vaccinating a sow herd, I mean, is there a risk with vaccinating too early, uh, vaccinating the grower finishers too early? or? Um, have you found that that's okay to do? Well, right now there's many production systems that they're vaccinated at processing or earlier because of the timing that I was, I was telling. And 
um, in my experience, I would say that I will overweight the timing criteria mm -hmm. over maternal immunity. If there's any impact on maternal immunity, is less important than the timing to generate that immune response. So in cases where we have an early uh, exposure in the nursery, we vaccinate uh, processing with good results. Now, um, in terms of vaccination protocols, I mean, we know that there's many other strategies, like, I mean, the timing is one, but also the monitoring or surveillance, it's very important I mean, to, in order to uh, evaluate those interventions. We always put in place uh, a monitoring system along with the vaccination protocol to determine if the protocol is working properly. That's very important because even if you vaccinate that processing, but if you're vaccinated by remic pigs, you won't get the full benefit of the vaccination. Or even if you're vaccinated at weaning, and if you have an early exposure, probably you are not having the enough time to generate that immune response. So the only way to know those is through monitoring. So we put in place diagnostic monitoring, but also production data and everything. And, and with this, with this uh, 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 analysis that we presented at Lehman, uh, also highlights the importance of the monitoring because if you're monitoring your prevalence in growing pigs, you can predict that the risk of having an outbreak in cell farms is higher. So then you can plan for action on biosecurity, vaccination, management practices. So it's a way to use the surveillance in a proactive manner to make decisions or to take actions. This is just one study, but we're calling for action right now uh, for, for generate more research on growing pigs to understand better because in our, uh, we feel that this is some of the missing uh, pieces that we are uh, facing on purse elimination and control program. Well, surprising results, but certainly valuable. We've been talking to Dr. Jose Angulo. He's a technical services veterinarian and purse specialist at Zoetis. Thanks again, Jose.